Gadgets and Gizmos, brought to you by MTS. Hello and welcome to the Gadgets and Gizmo show on Headlines Today. I'm Siddharth Sharma and over the next half an hour, we've lined up for you guys smartphone reviews from entry level to the top of the pyramid. But before we move ahead, let's take a look at the lineup. On the show this week, we get you a new phablet from the house of Sony. We also get you the review of the much awaited Nokia X. But first up, it's the all new Samsung Galaxy S5. All right, that was the lineup on the show. And first up, what we've got for you guys is the much talked and hyped up smartphone in India right now. Yes, we're talking about the all new Samsung Galaxy S5. But before we get into a full review, let's refresh you guys up with its specs first. Samsung Galaxy S5 sports a 5.1 inch Super AMOLED display up front with 1080 by 1920 screen resolution. It is powered by an Exynos Octa-Core processor, combo of a 1.9 GHz plus a 1.3 GHz quad-core processor backed by 2 GB of RAM. Internal storage is 16 GB, expandable up to 128 GB. At the back, you get a 16 megapixel camera with LED flash and a 2 megapixel front camera. For connectivity, the S5 offers NFC, Wi-Fi and a GPS. Samsung Galaxy S5 is IP67 certified for water and dust resistance. There is also a fingerprint scanner. Samsung Galaxy S5 is priced at Rs 51,500. Alright, those were the specs on the all-new Samsung Galaxy S5 and let's talk about the design on the S5 first. Well, it looks like any other Galaxy device. Innovate is the word for Samsung there. They've not made it any different than any other Samsung Galaxy device that you'll own, be it the Grand, the Grand 2 or the Samsung Galaxy S5. Okay, the only difference on this one is now that it comes with a perforated fox leather finish at the back and you get a nice neat looking heart rate sensor also integrated at the back of this smartphone. And now your charging port can be covered with this small little flap over here just because it's now waterproof and dust resistant. Rest all remains the same. The front of this smartphone looks like any other Galaxy device. So no surprises by Samsung there when it comes to the design on the all new Samsung Galaxy S5. Alright, coming to the display on the all new Samsung Galaxy S5. It's got a bigger screen than what you had on the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now it has a 5.1 inch Super AMOLED display up front with 1080p resolution. And what that boils down to is brilliant screen resolution, brilliant color reproduction. And of course, watching videos and playing games on this display is just out of this world. Samsung is always known to make great displays onto their smartphones and they do not disappoint with the Samsung Galaxy S5 here as well. Coming to the performance on the all-new Samsung Galaxy S5. Well, this one, especially that comes in India, boasts of an Exynos processor, which is a quad-core 1.9 GHz and a quad-core 1.3 GHz clubbed together and put into the smartphone. We really don't understand why Samsung did not launch the Samsung Galaxy S5 in India with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor, which is 4G LTE compatible. Well, that was the phone that we were really looking forward to. But given the fact that now it has an Exynos processor in it, it is not a slow phone by any means. It still performs and it performs well. On the Antutu benchmark test that we did, it yielded a score of 37,420, which is a very good benchmark score for a smartphone like this. It easily makes it one of the best performing smartphones out there in the market. So all in all, it is a performer, but that Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor really pinches because why? Why did you do this to the Indian consumer that you fit in 
an Exynos processor instead of the latest top of the line processor on a smartphone that is going to cost your pocket about 50,000 rupees. Well, the camera on the new Samsung Galaxy S5 is simply superb. In a way, it tells us what a 16 megapixel camera should be like on a smartphone. Now, with the camera on this one, you can now record videos in UHD, which has a pixel resolution of about 3840 by 2160 pixels. Now, that is just wow because it's not 4K video recording, but then it is Ultra HD, which is decent enough for a high end smartphone these days. You also get something called a live HDR on it, and of course, a selective focus option in which you can actually click an image and after you've clicked an image, you can select the focus area on it. So the camera on the Samsung Galaxy S5, which is a 16 megapixel one, is just brilliant. And I think it sets a benchmark for all the Android smartphone cameras out there. Another thing that Samsung has given is this S-Life app which actually tells you how many steps you've walked in a day or what kind of exercise regime that you have. But another cool thing about this one is a heart rate monitor. They've put a heart rate sensor right below the camera button so all you have to do is just put your index finger onto the sensor and it will get you the data for your heart rate almost all the time. So a very good integration over there and it is quite quick as well. Now the battery on the Samsung Galaxy S5 is wow because it is a marathon runner smartphone and what it delivers is just superb battery performance every single time. You put it up to a full charge and it will last you a day easily with about 15% battery still left. All in all, the Samsung Galaxy S5 looks like a candidate who's standing up for re-elections. It's not got many hardware upgrades to it, and even in terms of design, it's not that appealing. In a way, Samsung has played it really safe with the Samsung Galaxy S5. Sure, it has a couple of gimmicky features like the heart rate monitor at the back, and of course that fingerprint recognition to unlock and do your internet credit card transactions online, but you know, for gimmicky features like those, paying almost 52,000 rupees does not make any sense. On top of that, the Samsung Galaxy S5 in India especially also does not come out with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor on it. And with many of Samsung's competitors already coming out with high-end smartphones with 4G LTE compatibility, well, Samsung Galaxy S5 does not make the cut, at least for me. Now another smartphone that's been making waves in the Indian market is the all new Nokia X. It was Nokia's attempt to get into the Android space. But is it worth your money? Sahil Gupta, who's the web controller of mymobile.co.in, tells you all about that. Rumored for many months, the impossible has finally happened. This is Nokia X, Nokia's first Android phone. It's an Android phone with a major difference and it's finally here in India. Finally, Nokia has officially established its most awaited smartphone, the Nokia X, in India. It is Nokia's first device that runs on Android operating system. Nokia X has a 4-inch IPS LCD capacitive touchscreen with a resolution of 480 by 800 pixels along with 233 ppi pixel density. It also comes with multi-touch support up to two fingers. The device is powered by a dual-core 1GHz Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Play processor along with Adreno 203 GPU. The Nokia X is a dual-SIM smartphone with micro-SIM slots. It runs on Google Android 4.1.2 Jelly Bean operating system with Nokia X1 software platforms. The device has a 3-megapixel rear camera with 480p video recording at 30 frames per second. Nokia X also has 512 MB of RAM, 4 GB onboard storage, 
and 32GB expandable memory via microSD card slot. The Nokia X comes in a range of vibrant colors and will cost your pocket Rs 8,599. Let's begin with the design of this phone. It's got a really nice designer, a really colorful designer. Uh, Nokia offers multiple colors. We have got this red here, so we can just flip it easily. And uh, build quality wise, it's really solidly built. Actually, it's probably the best built phone at its price. Design wise, it's a little boxy, which means it's got sharp edges which dig into your hands. It's not very comfortable to hold over long periods of time. So let's talk about the camera on this phone. It's got a 3 megapixel camera because it's got a really unique take on Android. So let's get rid of the camera first. But the 3 megapixel camera out here is quite disappointing. The picture quality is not that great. It's average at best and it doesn't even have a flash. So that means it's quite useless in low light conditions. Overall, it's quite a disappointing camera. If photography is important for you, then this is not the phone to buy. Probably the most unique thing about the Nokia X is its take on Android. It runs on Android 4.1 Jelly Bean, but it doesn't look like Android. It actually looks like Windows Phone. Nokia has designed the user interface similar to Windows Phone, and it combines this with its fast lane UI, which we have seen before on its Asha phone. What this means is that you don't get full uh, Android multitasking, and these icons look like Windows Phone tiles. One of the biggest problems with this phone is that you don't get access to the Google Play Store. So this means uh, most of the Google services that one comes to expect of an Android phone are replaced by Microsoft and Google services. So for instance, you, you don't have Google Maps, you have got no, Nokia Here Maps. You don't get Gmail, you get Outlook.com, you get Nokia Mix Radio. These are good services, but most people rely on Google services and those people who feel Google services are important, they will not enjoy the experience on this phone. Another problem is that you don't get access to most of the applications that are available for Android out of the box. Instead, Nokia has its Nokia store and it preloads the Yandex store, which offers a lot of Android apps, but still you don't get access to all apps, more importantly, Google apps. The phone delivers very good battery life. It easily lasts a day. You can use social networks, you use the internet a lot. Nokia has its own browser out here. You make a lot of calls. You can use Nokia's mixed radio services to stream a lot of music and the phone will easily last through a day. At Rs. 8500, it's a very interesting device. Even though it competes with the likes of Micromax and other local players in India, which offer better specs at the same price, this phone offers great build quality and Nokia's brand lineage and customer service. But at the same time, Nokia offers its own Lumia 520, which is a very reliable phone. It has better hardware than this phone and it has better specs and offers the smooth, silky smooth Windows phone experience. I think that's a better deal than this phone because you don't really need to go through the hurdles of this forked Android UI and that's a much more reliable device. And with that, it's time for us to take a very small break on this episode, but you guys don't go anywhere because there's a lot more technology action coming your way on the other side. Gadgets and Gizmos, brought to you by MTS.